we're now almost one week after we seeded and behind me we've got a, a field that's a bit uneven to say the least. Now one possible reason it could be uneven is rats. We do have a, a, a rat population here at Erie. I've got uh, Dr Grant Singleton with me who uh, specialises in rats to tell us a little bit more about how rats interact with rats. Now I'm also thinking over here, looking around here, there's an area with a rat fence over to our, mm. to my left. That's ominous. And now that, that can be good because if you do have a rat problem, last year there was a rat problem just here, it's good to have what we call a trap crop where you plant an area early, about two to three weeks early, and then have traps with multiple capture traps, entrances like this. So the rats, they'll go in, but can't get back out again. The other thing is, yeah, where and when should you conduct rat control? The when is now. Because the main, we know from the breeding ecology of rats, for every female rat that you remove at this time of the season, it's equivalent to removing about 60 rats come the ripening stage of the crop. Particularly after the fallow period, the rats, there's a big disturbance during the fallow period and the working of the soil. So the rats then get moved out, get moved to the edges and they aggregate. And that's the best time to manage them. And so along these areas where there's cover, also here in, the, in this farm, you have irrigation canals underneath. And so the entrances of those canals, because they're good habitats for rats as well. So they need cover and they need areas that are not being disturbed. How? We have here Trappy the rat. Mm -hmm. And Trappy is, is used often when I talk to farmers. And we will show that they will enter into the trap here and he'll force his way through. Trappy's and rats. Big. Yeah, Trappy's big, but see how they sort of crunch down? And rats can do that as well. The only thing that limits a rat, they, they can dislocate their shoulder shoulders or whatever, it's the width of their head which indicates as to how big the, the hole is they can get in. Mm. And with a mouse, you push your finger in, a mouse can get into a hole. Mm. With a rat, it's more sort of a, probably a, a large thumb. So it's usually about 12 millimetres. If you've got a hole bigger than that, then the rats can get through. And so often, you know, you don't need a very big opening here, the rats will force their way through. Hey, when we first seeded, Hakim and I were most concerned about rats. What we didn't think about was birds. What do we know about birds and their interactions with seeded rice? In agricultural system, there are two approaches. One is they will, will spread um, something to feed the animals just prior to the crop coming to the, the stage of, of seed. The other approach is, is, is scaring them away. Here in the Philippines and elsewhere in Asia, often it's, it's using of what you've got here, the flags, to just cause a bit of, of disturbance. Enough I well, have seen not far from here where they have a little, like a little windmill, with a little ratchet on it, making a noise, and mm. that's supposed to keep the birds away as well. So it's, it's looking at, at noise as a deterrent. But really, we don't know much at all about the bird problem. And again, one of the big questions is where are they breeding, where are they aggregating, and try to see if we can prevent the problem before it does escalate.